My name is Stephanie Shea. I am a voice actor. Um, I've been in stuff like Naruto and Bleach and uh, The Melancholy of Haruhi Suzumiya. I'm in Gundam Unicorn, K-On, Kuri. Um, I also work in video games like Resident Evil, Death of My Cry 4? Or was it 5? Uh, I don't remember. It was in Bioshock 2. Uh, a bunch of stuff like that. And I've done a bunch of starting to do more original animation. But I can't tell you what it is yet, because I didn't have to make your brain explode. Good enough for me? Yes, my brain is already on fire. <laughs> your brain is always on fire. Well, that That's because you're local. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, you were once nominated for Best Voice Actress in an Anime Comedy by the American Anime Awards. Were you surprised to find out that you were running for such an award? Um, I was flattered, mm -hmm. uh, and I was bummed I didn't win. Uh, but yeah, I guess it was the first time they ever had that, and then they never had it again. So I was bummed because then I thought, oh, it would have been really cool to go to New York and go to like the like ceremony and like all that stuff, but it didn't happen. And yeah, it was cool though. It was a yeah. cool idea. So. Uh, you've also done work for most notable, well-known companies in the anime business, Bandai. Uh, Funimation, Viz Media, other such companies. Mm -hmm. Was there ever any notable, noticeable difference working between the companies, like friendliness of the staff there, or the areas where you recorded? So um, basically, the people that hire us are the studios. Okay. So when I do a show that Bondi releases, mm -hmm. I'm not working for Bondi. Okay. I'm working for whatever company Bondi hires to do the recording, whether that be. NYB Post or Bang Zoom or um, you know a, the only difference is Funimation. Funimation does their own recording in house. So if you're working on a Funimation show, you're recording at Funimation. But if you're working on a Genion, Bondi, Viz show, you could be working at Studiopolis, you could be working at whatever studio. Uh, so uh, everyone pretty much is, yeah, every, every studio runs a little bit differently but pretty much kind of the same, like the same but different. Mm -hmm. And um, the good thing about this industry is like, for the most part, most people are pretty cool and relaxed and they just want to have a good time and do good work. And as you said, not only you do voice acting, but you also adapted a road script for several anime like Fooly Cooly, Iggy Tosin, Oh My God, Hell Girl, Romeo X Juliet. Mm -hmm. uh, what was it like to help create and shape the scripts for these shows? Okay, so ADR adaption is really tedious and time consuming and it's really difficult work. Um, I don't really do it so much anymore because I made a choice a while ago that I wanted to focus more on my acting and less on the writing. Um, but it's, it's cool in the sense that when you're an actor and uh, you go in to record in session, you get the script that day right there. You don't get it beforehand you don't get any prep work, so you don't get to really see the show as a whole, and you only get to see your scenes. Uh, Yuri Lowenthal joked about this when Naruto first came out. He was cast as Sasuke, and everyone's like, oh my god, I love Yuri as Sasuke, oh, it's so perfect, and Yuri kind of was like, he was, <laughs> I mean, he was like, it's really flattering, and it's great and all, but like, I have no lines. Half the time, they're just looking at Sasuke's face uh -huh. on the screen. He's not saying he's anything. Yeah, he's just like grunting or barely talking. So, I mean, obviously, the character has developed since then. Mm -hmm. So, and Yuri is great anyway. But it's kind of that that sense. You I know, mean, when you're recording, you only see your lines, only see your scenes. For a long time, in the beginning of Eureka Seven, I had no idea what the show was about because like Eureka didn't really interact with most people in the gecko. You know, in the gecko state, they just just only rent in. So I didn't really know what the show was about because I only saw my scenes. Uh, when you write, you get to see the whole thing uh, over and over and over again. What happens is they give you a video mm -hmm. and they give you translation and you sit there and when you write, it's not, you want to make it sound like better English. Mm -hmm. You want to make it make sense and then you have to make it fit the mouth. So you're sitting, sitting like a crazy person like <laughs> doing all the voices to yourself. Mm -hmm. and uh, So it's rewarding, but it's super time consuming. It doesn't pay that much, um, <laughs> and yeah, it's a lot of work. 
Um, of all the characters you've played, which one do you feel like is closest related to you, and which one would you rather be in real life if you could? Wow. Uh, it's, it's hard. Hard question. Um, I may be crazy, but I can think. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, I don't really... The one... The characters that, like, I... The character that I related to emotionally the most was probably Mami Me from Furikuri. Because I think an overarching theme in her character and in her life is loneliness. She's incredibly lonely. Um, she's also, I think she's cute, really cute, but she's, if you notice, even though for as cute as she's drawn, she's an outcast. She's picked on at school. Um, and when I was in elementary school, I was picked on a lot at school. Um, so I kind of, I relate to that a lot. Um, but I don't burn shit, so <laughs> I'm not like that. Uh, in terms of, uh, if I could be some crazy fantasy, I would want to be some, like, I would want to be, like, Kasuga from, like, uh, from Basara. Mm -hmm. She's, like, she's totally kick butt. She's mm -hmm. totally hot, independent, and, although, I don't know what she sees in Kenshin. <laughs> that part's a little bit weird. Um, well, they always do go for the underdog, so. Yeah. <laughs> it's always the best thing. Um, so, um. Yeah, I lost my place. What the hell? Okay. Because you're crazy. Yeah, I'm crazy enough that I can't read it. You have crazy writing that's like, <laughs> you can't read it. Oh, no, trust me. If I couldn't, if I wrote it, I could read it. No one else could. <laughs> It'd be in tech or trek or some random language. Um, here's one. Uh, roles. You've, I know you played a lot of roles in character, but was there that one role that you didn't get, even though you're like, ah, oh, I've almost spent no why. Um, not. I mean, it happens all the time. There's like a lot of parts that I wanted to get and didn't get. Um, but I think you kind of have to let it go, or else it would really suck if I was like upset about it like for the rest of my life. Um, it's just part of the business and part of what you do as an actor. So you kind of have to like learn to accept that. You learn to deal with the rejection. The better you are with rejection, rejection, the better you are at your job. Because if you're like, if you're like stressing about out about it, about it, then like stressing a lot about it, then you like will get nervous at your auditions, or you get angry. Or it's not worth it. So, um, not too much. Like, I mean, yeah, of course, in the moment, yes. But then you kind of have to let it go. So. I tried that once. It didn't turn out well. No, you need to <laughs> meditate. I tried. I meditated and blew again? up a building. <laughs> Alright, so I believe we have time for one more question. Okay. Uh, those of us said that you helped co-direct Resident Evil 5, is that correct? That's true. Alright. Um, what was it like working on a game that is part of probably the most famous zombie series in the world? It was super, super, super cool. I was super nervous. It was, uh, it was super exhausting and super stressful, and I thought it was going to come out like poo. But then, in the end, it actually came out pretty good, um, and I'm very proud of it. Um, so, and I was I'm honored to be a part of that franchise. Uh, I played that game when I was in college, and I was no good at it at <laughs> all. So, I think it's funny that um, I get to later on. And <laughs> yeah, but um, I really come to respect the fans and respect that franchise. Um, I I like the element of cheesiness that it is, even though we're trying to make it more real and more serious. But there's still that that nostalgia you know, element for the, like, hardcore fans. Um, yeah, so it's, I'm really honored. It's really cool. Um, can I mention my charity group? Of course. Uh, I just wanted to plug my charity group. It's called okay. We Heart Japan. You can go to weheartjapan.com and we throw various events, um, to, you know, that are anime themed or Japanese culture themed. Uh, we're, we're located in, in Southern California, so it's mostly in there, but we're kind of branch out and see, do events elsewhere. Um, and all of the profits go to a nonprofit organization that is helping in all the rebuilding and the recovery and uh, relief efforts that are taking place in northern Japan due to the tsunami. Because there's a lot of cleanup and there's whole industries that are wiped out and people who have like completely lost their way of living that needs to be like rebuilt. That I know that it's not as prevalent in the international media anymore. So in the U.S., you're not seeing those articles, but they still need a lot of help. And 
to a company uh, to a country that has given us so much in terms of anime and what we love like it's it's a good way to give back so uh, any fans who have friends in Southern California ever want to take a trip out for any one of, one of our events we're gonna try to do more online stuff you can find us at weheartjapan.com or follow us on Twitter at weheartjapanxo cool. All right, this is Alpha Little Loco. We're signing off. Okay. Thank you for the interview. Thanks. Nice to meet you. Thanks. Bye.